I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. You know, it's springtime in Augusta, Georgia. And for us, that means a golf tournament is coming up real soon. And we are very excited about it. And we're also excited to be celebrating the 40th anniversary of our company right in time for the tournament. So we're gonna do all of our favorite tournament recipes today. We're gonna start with pimento cheese. You know, we're famous for that down here. And I think you'll like some of the ingredient choices in our recipe. And then our signature chicken salad. People love to pick it up in the cafe, and we also shipped it in mail order. And then we're gonna do egg salad. It's also a classic for us in Augusta. And we have a brand new recipe for our 40th year, a sweet tea and lemonade cake. It's an awesome recipe. And in Vera's Corner today, we're gonna introduce you to a frozen drink that's in honor of a famous golfer. So I'm ready to get in the kitchen. Come join me. All right, so springtime in Augusta, there's nothing like it. We're all getting ready for the golf tournament. This town just turns into an international city during that first week in April. And with that comes recipes that we have now become noted for. And certainly the first one that I wanna to do today is our pimento cheese. You know, we were in the mail order business. We had a cafe for almost 25 years um, on our, at our store on Washington Road. And people would literally come in on Friday just to get our pimento cheese. And as a newcomer to Augusta back in the early 80s, I remember going to the golf tournament and the only thing that you could get to eat there was a pimento cheese sandwich or a chicken salad sandwich wrapped in green wax paper. I remember it vividly. So if you're a fan of pimento cheese, I certainly want you to try this recipe. It's in the first cookbook and it will also be on our website at veryvera.com. Um, all right, first step, the recipe says for you to hand shred your sharp cheddar cheese. And in the book, I actually suggest Cracker Barrel sharp cheddar. But the fresh market sharp cheddar, I promise you, I cannot tell the difference or I would not be using it today. So I highly recommend that. So make sure you hand grate it because it will absorb all of the other ingredients that we're going to add. So we're going to start with cayenne pepper and I'll just sprinkle that in. And then we've got black pepper. And then the secret ingredient, one of them here, is Tony Saturi's Creole seasoning. It just adds that perfect touch to it. All right, so the next ingredient, uh, you know, the recipe is for pepino cheese, but my twist is that I use roasted peppers, roasted red peppers. And you know, back in the day, I used to put them over the gas, the flame on the gas stove and get them good and charred and put them in a paper bag, seal it up and the char would just come off. They were so good. But the Fresh Market has made it easy for me again, because you can buy whole roasted red peppers where their condiments are in the store. So I sliced them and then I cut them into little chunks. And now next brand that I'm gonna suggest for this recipe is Duke's Mayonnaise. So I'm gonna add that in. And then, you know, on some of this, depending on how long it sits, you might want to add some more cheese, you want to add some more peppers, but this just mixes up beautifully. And there's no preservatives in this, but through the years, we did our own test internally on how long this could stay in the refrigerator and be fresh. All right, so I'm gonna continue to mix this together. And just like I said, always remember to hand shred, add your ingredients, and then be prepared that you might have to add a little bit more and put some extra peppers if you really love that flavor. I'm so excited to share this recipe, and many of you have already let me know that you make it all the time. So this is Vera's signature chicken salad. This is also in our first cookbook, 
and also available on our website. But it's just the best chicken salad to me, and I love everybody's chicken salad. So one of the things that we recommend here is if you've got, the recipe tells you to boil chicken breast, but if you're in a hurry, there's nothing like just picking up a rotisserie chicken at the fresh market. And I actually love both the dark meat and the white meat in my chicken salad, so that is the best of both worlds. And because we're gonna make these into tea sandwiches, I opted to pulse the rotisserie chicken lightly in the food processor so that it would spread well in a tea sandwich. But if you're gonna serve it as a salad on a plate, then you would just hand chop it or use a couple of forks to shred it. All right, so to the chicken, I'm gonna add in my Pearson Farms Elliott pecans. And these are the ones that are already cut up. Absolutely love them. And Pearson Farms pecans really hold up well in the freezer. You know, I can pull them out anytime during the year. They have a really nice sweetness to them and they have a lot of different flavors on their website. So we certainly encourage you to go and subscribe to their newsletter so you'll know when they have specials and different things going on. I'm gonna add in my sliced green onions to this and then we're just gonna toss this together. And this is gonna make really a nice amount. All right, so now the dressing that goes with this. Now I'm back to Hellman's mayonnaise, which most of the recipes in my book call for. I'm gonna add to this just some black pepper, some onion powder. And the reason I'm using powder is because the rotisserie chicken already has a lot of salt in it. And then this is garlic powder. So I've switched this up because I'm using rotisserie chicken. All right, so now my dried tarragon. And if you're not familiar with this ingredient, it is very sweet, it has a nice licorice taste to it, and truly that's part of the beauty and, the, and, and why this recipe is so popular. Um, so once you've made this, it's just like when you make potato salad, you don't want to put all of it in, just add a little bit at a time. So I'll start adding this to my mixture. And then when we come back from the break, we're gonna get started on egg salad. This is gonna be so good, I love it. Welcome back everybody and if you're just joining me, we are celebrating springtime in Augusta, Georgia and the fact that our famous golf tournament is just around the corner. I'm enjoying celebrating some of the recipes that I've been making in this company now this year for 40 years. So just hopefully you're all in on these ideas and might be planning to have some folks over to watch the tournament and you can make these recipes. All right, so this is the egg salad and this is also very popular that week and just popular in general for picnics and etc. So we started with boiling the eggs and I've had so many people comment over the years about how do you do the perfect boiled egg? Well, for me, it came straight from my grandmother. She would put the eggs in a saucepan and cover them with water. And then you put the lid on and turn the heat to high. The minute you hear them dancing, and for me with that induction cooktop, they're dancing almost immediately. But just as soon as you hear the water boiling and the eggs kind of dancing in the pan, then you're going to set your timer for 20 minutes and just let them sit there. I can leave them on top of the stove on my induction, but you might want to remove them to another eye if you don't have that range. Then after 20 minutes, you're going to run them under cold water and just empty the water out a couple of times just so it'll stay cold. And then to peel the eggs, I love to have just a little bit of a drip of water from the faucet and then you can just peel them right off. Today, I used my Chef Mate egg slicer to get one way cut in half and then you turn it the other way and it cuts it into little pieces. Perfect when you're using these for tea sandwiches. All right, so to my mayonnaise in the bowl, I'm gonna add Durkee sauce. And this is a must. You've got to find this in the grocery store because it's a key ingredient here. Then I'm gonna add in my relish. I usually use Mount Olive relish for this, and I've got salt and pepper. 
So we're just going to mix that together. And you know, a few minutes ago in the pimento cheese, I talked about the shelf life. You will want to eat this within a week of preparation. So now I'm going to add in my eggs, grab my larger spatula over here. And again, if you want to do this as a salad to go on a plate, then you can just roughly chop it. But since we're putting these in little tea sandwiches today for our golf party, I love the consistency of this. That's just perfect. All right. So in Vera's Corner today, we're going to talk about a frozen drink that's named for a famous golfer. And then we'll get started on the sweet tea and lemonade pound cake. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Vera's Corner is brought to you by Tax Slayer. Granada is a semi-frozen dessert made with sugar, water, and several flavorings. For me, this time of year, the perfect one is an Arnold Palmer. Let me give you a quick recipe. All you need for this recipe is two-thirds cup sugar, two and a half cups water, two black tea bags, and two lemons. Bring the sugar and water to a boil in the saucepan, add the tea bags, and steep for five minutes. Remove from the heat and allow to cool to room temperature. While the tea mixture cools, zest both lemons. Add half the juice and zest to the cooling tea mixture. Once cool, pour the tea mixture into a shallow, freezer-safe dish. Cover tightly with plastic wrap and freeze. After an hour, run a fork through the mixture to break up any large chunks of ice and return to the freezer. Repeat this every 15 to 20 minutes until the consistency is fluffy and no large ice crystals remain, about two or three more times. Granada may be made ahead and stored in a plastic covered container in the freezer for up to three days. Fluff with a fork before serving and scoop into glasses. This frozen treat is so tart and refreshing and perfect for your next golf party. Enjoy. Welcome back everybody and I'm having such a great time celebrating the golf tournament, getting ready for all the preparations and many of you will be coming to my city uh, during the golf tournament and for those of you that aren't and will be watching it on TV, we've been giving you some amazing suggestions for how to get ready for having friends over. So the drink that we did in Vera's Corner today, you know, is named for Arnold Palmer and it's just a crushy, slushy, delicious frozen drink that you can make when you have friends over but we are celebrating the 40th year of this company we thought you know for years we've been known as the cake business I'm the cake lady what can we do in celebration of that 40th year so we have actually tweaked our lemon pound cake recipe because you know Arnold Palmer's famous beverage when he has lunch or dinner is what we call the Arnold Palmer which is sweet tea and lemonade that he mixes half and half. So this is the recipe that's brand new for us. And I wanna walk you through the steps of making that today. All right, first you start with room temperature ingredients. So we're gonna cream the butter, add the sugar slowly. And then once that's incorporated, this beats for 20 minutes. While that's beating, you can whisk together the heavy cream and your flavorings, and I just did that in a measuring cup. Whisk together the cake flour and the salt, and for this, I just used a fork. Just make sure you've incorporated it well. Once the 20 minutes is up, you're gonna scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl. At that point, you will add eggs one at a time, making sure it's incorporated before you add the next. Again, after that, you want to scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl, and this mixture will beat for five minutes. Once that's completed, alternately add your dry and wet ingredients, ending with your cream. Scrape the sides and the bottom of the bowl, and then add your lemon zest and incorporate that by folding it together. I've prepared a 12 cup bump pan with cooking spray and now I'm going to pour the batter into the prepared pan. And once you've evened it out at the top, 
You want it to be about an inch to an inch and a half from the top, which is absolutely perfect in this case. All right, so I put the cake into a 325 degree preheated oven on the middle rack and it baked for an hour and 20 minutes. I've let it cool, it's beautiful. And so now I'm gonna get started on the glaze. And this is what pulls this entire recipe together because the cake is very lemony, but the topping that's gonna go on it has got the tea in it. So that's that first flavor that you get in your mouth when you eat a bite of this cake. So I've got my granulated sugar in the bowl. I'm going to add in my freshly squeezed lemon juice. And this is actually the lemon juice from the lemon that I zested earlier so you don't waste any part of that lemon. I love that part. And just the smell of lemon is so refreshing. I'm going to add the butter flavoring and my tea extract is actually tea oil, but that is what really pronounces that flavor for the glaze for this cake. And all we're trying to do here is just incorporating it because you want some of that crunch with the granulated sugar on the cake. So what I love to do here, and again, these sheet pans come in so handy in our kitchen. I put, left it on the cooling rack and then I'm going to use my pastry brush to glaze this cake. And if you put a piece of parchment paper down, then you don't have such a huge cleanup. And this is actually to personal preference. So I like to start, and you wanna get the whole thing done. I like to paint it, you know, from top to bottom. And then just depending on how that goes, then I might go back and do another coat of this. So as I reflect back on 40 years, I cannot tell you the number of nights that I might have spent the night in the bakery because we got so many orders online that we just ended up baking all night long. And as hard as that seems, it truly has a lot to do with, you know, the success of where we've come from the beginning stages of mail order into now getting to teach all of you how to make the cakes that I've made for years. All right, so we're gonna get this set up in a beautiful presentation for our par tea today. So we'll see you back in just a few minutes. This is looking great. Welcome back everybody and I'm ready to go to the golf course or better yet have friends over to watch the tournament on TV and I want yours to look exactly like this. So let's kind of walk back through what we did today and let me give you some additional tips. So we started with our tea sandwiches and the first one we did was pimento cheese. And so one of the things about tea sandwiches is you want all of them to be different shapes. You also can make them the day before as long as you have an airtight container to put them in, those work really perfectly. So we did these in squares, cracked pepper on the edges, so instead of just laying them flat, you can turn them on their side. So that's a perfect garnish there. And then we love to use our cake platters as, you know, risers and just as another way to display a sandwich. So I love the way that turned out. And then our garnish on the platter is like a little charcuterie stick. And our campers actually did that for the Valentine's camp recently, and they just thought that was amazing. So I love the way that turned out. The next sandwich was the signature chicken salad. We did that in a triangle. We did partially cut very fine to go along the edge. And here again, the white bread for pimento cheese, wheat bread for the chicken salad, and just the ingredients there with the tarragon and the pecans that just give it that little bit of a crunch. Love that recipe. And then finally, the egg salad. So the egg salad we did as circles, and that is on John Durst bread, so it has a little bit of a yellow tint to it, it's very moist. And then we did paprika on the top of these sandwiches just to give it a bounce of color. And our garnish here is again, some of the things that we've done in the past with our uh, young people with a little pinwheel that has a pickle in the center and then a cherry tomato. And then finally, 
the sweet tea and lemonade cake, and that is a hole in one. And so we literally put the golf ball in the center. But the aroma of that cake right now for me, you can really smell the tea, you can really smell the lemon, and the glaze, the way that that sets up, is almost like a crunch. So I love the way that that turned out. So what if you just don't have time to do all this, and I know you really want to, you can run into the Fresh Market. They're gonna have all kinds of platters already made up for sandwiches. They have fruit already cut up. So many things to make your entertaining easy. And let me certainly recommend these smoked barbecue potato chips. That one is my absolute favorite. And then we've put just some cream cheese that we picked up there with a red pepper jelly to go with that. So how did we make this table look so great? First of all, Hester and Cook, the runner, the placemats, the magnolia, it looks so good. And then, you know, if you need flowers, our other partner at Go Buy Plants, if you're ready to plant the azalea so your yard can look like the golf course, or tea olives so that you've got that wonderful aroma like in the cake, we've got a coupon, Very Vera 20, for you to get 20% off. And then finally, if you're looking for some more information about coming to Augusta during the tournament, go to veraaugusta.com to get more information on that. Well, obviously, I'm ready to celebrate 40 years and the golf tournament coming up. And I want to remind you that no matter what you do, do it in good taste. And I hope you'll join me again next week. <music>